Okay, since I always have people that ask me to teach them chess, I thought I'd make um, some chess videos, post them on YouTube. Uh, these are fairly advanced, I'm not going to explain a lot of stuff. Uh, maybe I'll make some beginner videos later, but uh, the people that want me to teach them already know how to play chess. Uh, so, in this game that I played, uh, I'm white, I play e4. Uh, I'll explain the opening moves for now, and then in the future I'll say, well, as we saw in game, you know, 1, e4, is a good move. Uh, I don't see why you would play anything else. Uh, I mean, I know people play other moves here, but e4 makes a lot of sense to me. You get your pawn out, you open line for the queen and the bishop. Uh, really, why, why play anything else? c6 is the move we're going to face now. Uh, this is a strange move, not a very common move, but one which you will face, so you'd better learn what to do against it. Uh, it's c6, the Karo Khan. Uh, it's a lot like the Scandinavian. I'm sure you've seen that. Uh, just an immediate d5. Well, here it's preparing d5. c6 followed by d5. And the Karo Khan defense. Uh, my response, I think, is pretty natural. d4. Control the center. I'll open lines for both bishops now. Looks very strong to me. I would much rather have white in this position, which is why I have white in this position. And there's d5, attempting a counterattack. I I should probably either defend my pawn or capture his pawn or advance my pawn. One of one of those. Um, in another game, I'll um, I know I'll be posting up later. I played e5. Uh, in this game, I'm going to play knight c3, the modern variation of the Karo Khan. Uh, I'm not really sure which is best. I um, haven't really decided yet. Uh, maybe I guess I should decide eventually. Um, in any case, it's worth uh, getting to know both of them before you make a final decision. And uh, Maybe there's no need to ever choose one or the other. In any case, I play knight c3 here. And the idea, as you can see, is he captures, and I recapture, and my knight has a really nice position in the center. And now he immediately challenges my knight with knight to f6. Uh, normally, uh, black will prepare that with knight to d7. And then, you know, and then he can play knight to f6. And then if I capture the knight on d7, recaptures, and he still has a knight on f6. But in this case, he's a little hasty. Uh, just brings the knight out immediately. I capture. And now... Uh, he has to recapture with one of the pawns. G captures f6 is the more common move. He plays E captures f6. Um, it's still played, though. It's still worth seeing. Uh, the pawn is displaced, though. It's a minor advantage for me. Now I just de develop with knight to f3, uh, preparing to castle. He plays bishop to e6. Apparently he's not in a rush to castle. And that's actually going to be one of the major thematic um, issues with this game, is black's failure to castle... Um, is going to cause him some problems. Bishop d3. I am continuing to prepare castle. A plays c5, another counterattack. I guess this uh, is kind of uh, connected to why he played bishop to e6, um, because now he has uh, some threats here. Uh, he's threatening the obvious, uh, just c takes d4. He's also threatening to just advance to c4, um, which is defended by the bishop. Uh, which would be a threatening my bishop. And neither one of those is a really a very serious threat. If you look at it, you'll see, you know, those aren't a big deal. I'm not scared of that. Uh, what, but what he's hoping is, you know, I'll just recapture the pawn on c5. Or uh, not recapture, but I'll, I'll just capture the pawn on c5. And then the b dark bishop will come out, recapturing on c5. And then he can castle. Um, that's his plan. And uh, since I have the database of millions of games, and it shows me um, where my games diverge from what have been played in you know tournaments. Uh, it's worth noting in 2004 this same position was reached between Boris Gerbach uh, as white of course and he's a master and a senior master uh, Emiligio or Emiligio Fushak. Uh, obviously both uh, foreign sounding names. Uh, in any case uh, Gerbach will go on to castle and then win 29 moves later. Uh, I instead just play c3. I suppose uh, Gerbach recognized there's no real rush to deal with this um, phantom threat from c5. Uh, and I realize that as well, but uh, I think it's just a matter of, you know, there's no real rush castle either. Uh, 
any case, so I play c3. The idea is, you know, I'm defending the pawn on d4, and I'm allowing my bishop to retreat to c2. I can always castle later. There's, there's no immediate threat to my king. Plays knight c6. Uh, increasing pressure on d4. I defend d4. You know, this is what chess is really about, is a whole lot of pressure on a square, and all these arrows are aimed at d4. And finally, he goes for the exchange. I recapture, he captures, I recapture. And I think you can see my position is steadily improving. Uh, he's got the pawn out of position, and now I have these centralized uh, doubled bishops. Uh, you know, here's a fancy sounding phrase that I wrote that uh, I guess you could imagine a grandmaster saying in some book Victory tends to come after the multiplication of minor advantages which combine to create overwhelming pressure at some critical juncture. Uh, that describes just about every chess game I ever play, is a bunch of little advantages come together and then it's like, boom, you know, you win or you lose, one of the two. Well, he plays bishop to d6, he's preparing to castle, and I guess this is one of those moments where I could be like, you know, pause it if you want to think about it. What would you do here? What I did, uh, I think it's uh, hopefully a fairly obvious move, uh, why not? Uh, oh, snap, yeah, check. Um, he sort of waited too long to castle. Uh, he's got the problem here that if he tries to block with bishop to d7, I just follow up with queen e2 check. And then if he tries to block that with queen to e7, then I play bishop takes d7, and the queen can't recapture because the queen's pinned to the king. Uh, so the king has to capture, and then the king is stuck on d7 in the middle of the board. Um, and it's almost cer certainly safer to do what he did, which is king f8. But it's also very awkward. I castle. It is nice to castle. Just rub it right in his face. Uh, a6 attacking my bishop rather spitefully. I simply fall back. And now h5. I guess he's figured that, you know, his king side's already messed up. He might as well try to, you know, attack somehow on the king side. The other idea here, which he's going to try, is to uh, bring that rook to h6. Since, uh, um,. You know, and then I guess I don't know where he's going to go from there, but uh, he's certainly going to try that. Well, I play bishop to b3. Uh, I'm hoping he'll capture my bishop. I'd love to play either queen takes b3 or a takes b3. I'm not exactly sure which one's better. Uh, probably queen takes b3, but because it's uh, attacking that undefended b7 pawn. But, oh, it's really hard to say. They both look pretty good to me. Uh, he responds queen to c7. Uh, a, a threat to my h2 pawn, so I just move my pawn to safety. And now he has rook e8, uh, trying to get control of the file. Of course, you know, that's what a lot of chess is about, is controlling these files. I reciprocate. h4, I guess he's uh, trying somehow to put some additional pressure on my king side. I think he's running out of ideas. Uh, queen f3, uh, might as well defend, uh, get control of that long file. I, my bishop's still defended by the a-pawn. You know, doubled pawns are not a bad thing, necessarily. I'd love to have that doubled pawn there. Uh, doubling towards the center is usually good, unless you wind up with, like, double isolated pawns. But otherwise, it's usually pretty good. I'd be happy with that. F5. Uh, this is actually one of the um, critical mistakes of the game. Uh, I think you can see that that pawn is hard to defend. I mean, it may, maybe doesn't look apparent immediately, but it is going to be an issue, um, as, as we'll see in a couple moves. Uh, rook e2, I'm just going to increase pressure on the e-file. Rook h6, trying to uh, do whatever it is he's trying to do there. Uh, real strong control on the e-file now. And this this is really uh, shows the weakness of the f5 pawn. If I had another move right now, I could simply capture on f5. Because if the bishop recaptures, I have uh, rook takes e8 checkmate. Uh, so that's kind of a problem for him. Bh2, a rather uh, petty move. King h1, I simply just move aside. And now bishop f4, it, very awkward. He's trying to use his bishop to block me from attacking that pawn. What would you do here? You can pause it if you want or not. I don't care. I played bishop e5. Uh, get this stuff traded off the board. Bishop captures, rook recaptures. The queen comes over, uh, helping to defend the pawn and e8. 
I just increase pressure on the pawn. Uh, he defends it with g6, which, I mean, it looks great, but remember that his rook was trying to do something there, and now his rook, um, obviously not going to slide over. Uh, so his rook is sorely out of position. Now I just play back where, uh, to b3. Uh, he is, uh, brings his king to g7, uh, trying to shuffle around his king side a little bit. Queen to e3, uh, his lack of castling is buying me time. I'm getting uh, increasing pressure along the e file. Overwhelming power I have right now. The rook uh, comes back to its starting position. And now the uh, position just shatters. Uh, I guess you can pause it, you know, if you want. Um, what would you do here? What would I do? Uh, I would like to think it's uh, kind of obvious. Bishop takes. Rook takes. Rook takes. Queen takes. Queen takes. And I am up a pawn. Uh, that's what it's all about right there. He, uh, I guess he tries to move his king to safety here. Uh, probably not the best move, but I think he's lost anyways. Attacking the b-pawn. Defends b-pawn. Four. Uh, locking those pawns in space and giving me um, a little more room. Trying to keep his pawn safe. I just play down and attack the a-pawn. A pawn moves to safety. I just play down and attack the B pawn again. Uh, he decides to bring his king um, out to defend a little bit. Likewise, I bring my king out as well. Kings just come out. The rook comes down to try to hold the sixth rank. The king comes up again. And now he realizes he has to move. Um, and this is one of those nasty positions where it's like, you know, yeah, I have to move, but I don't really want to move anywhere. I'd rather just not move at all. Um, he plays back to rook b8, and I, you know, I'd love to move, so I just keep moving. He attacks my rook. You know, how will I defend my rook? Well, with my king, of course. And he shuffles his king around, because he's already lost, and he doesn't have much he can do. And I'm going to start pushing these pawns. I have three pawns. He has two pawns. I am going to be able to break through here. Uh, the king continues to shuffle. I bring up the a pawn. The rook shuffles, and there's the big push. Capture, capture, and now the A pawn is isolated, undefended. It's a real liability for him. Uh, King's not going to be able to come over and, and help defend that. I lock it in place. Rook shuffles a little bit. The king comes up. Rook continues to shuffle. And there I got a big check right there. The king has to move to defend the uh, G6 pawn. King comes over putting pressure on A5. Rook uh, checks on b8. I guess the idea here, um, it's more of a hope than a reality for him, is if I take on a5 and he takes on b3, then my king's stuck in front of my pawn, and he's hoping somehow he'll get a draw out of that. Um, not a realistic hope. Uh, I don't even, you know, it's not going to happen even if I decide to take a5, I don't think. But, uh, Better to not even, you know, run the risk of any sort of trickery like that. Just bring the rook over and um, intervene like that. Rook goes back to defending the pawn. B comes up, adding pressure. He captures, and I don't even need to immediately uh, take the pawn. I just can advance this guy like that. B comes down. You know, he's so close to getting a queen. It's not going to happen at this point. Uh, black resigns. Uh, so that's that's that game, the Karl Khan. Uh, just really uh, quickly run through it and fast. The end.